Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about the cranial nerve assessment. This is an assessment you will be doing in clinical and you will also be tested on this in class, ATI, and on the NCLEX. So we need to get it down solid. Okay, so let's jump into them. There's 12 total. The first one is the olfactory nerve. This is your sense of smell. And this is actually a pretty easy one to test. If you're testing somebody's sense of smell, just grab something you have nearby, like a cup of coffee or even like an alcohol wipe from your pocket and ask them, can you smell this smell? And if they say yes, then that sense is intact. Our second one is optic, which is our vision. So the way we can have them test vision is have them read something. Make sure it's in a language they understand and it's appropriate font size and if they have glasses that they need to wear that they're wearing their glasses. All of that taking into consideration, if they can read it, then that's good. Intact optic, intact cranial nerve number two. Number three is our ocular motor. So this is movement of the eye and pupil constriction and dilation. So this is what we're testing when we're doing PERLA. This isn't the only thing we're testing when we're doing PERLA, but when you're doing PERLA, you're also doing number three, done, easy. You're already doing this assessment anyway. Number four is our trochlear. So eye movement, but downward and inward. So can they look at their nose? Simple, just ask them, can you look at your nose? If they can, they have number four intact. Number five is our trigeminal. So this is our facial nerve and our jaw movement. So can they move their jaw? If they're talking to you and they're speaking normally, they're probably moving their jaw, so that's a good sign. And then facial nerve, take something nice and soft, like a little cotton ball or something like that, and gently brush it on their cheek. If they can feel that sensation, they got number five intact. Number six is our abducens. So this is our lateral eye movement. So can you look side to side? Number four was looking at her nose. Number six is looking side to side. And actually a lot of the eye ones you can put together. So like our number three, our number four, our number six, we can move those all together when we do our six cardinal fields of gaze. So if you don't remember what that is, that's when you're gonna take like a pen or your finger or something like that and have them focus on it and then make your little asterisks. Or you can make an H, you can make the letter H and then say, okay, follow my pen or follow my finger. Right? So if they can move their eyes in every direction, then they're getting all of those cranial nerves. Number seven is facial, facial expression. So have them smile, have them frown, have them puff out their cheeks, okay? If they can do that, they got number seven. Eight is another easy one, auditory, hearing. So if they've been listening to you and taking good directions on these first seven, that means they heard you well enough. So they got number eight going down. They got number eight intact. Number nine is our glossopharyngeal. So this is the ability to taste and swallow. So when appropriate, we can give them things to taste, like something salty, something sweet, something sour, asking can they tell the difference. If they're on some sort of like restriction where they're not able to have anything, you can just ask them to swallow. You're gonna be checking their trachea to make sure it's midline anyway as part of your other assessment. So kind of just group it together and say that this is our number nine, our cranial nerve number nine. So just check their, their throat and say, can you please swallow? Ooh. Yes, okay, we're good. Number 10 is our vagus nerve. So this is the sensation of the pharynx and the vocal cords. So this is what we're checking when we go say ah, right? So if you can say ah, I don't know why I'm singing it, but if you can do that, you heard number 10 vagus nerve is intact. Number 11 is our spinal accessory. So can you move your head from side to side? Can you move your shoulders up and down? Easy. And then number 12, I think number 12 also goes with number 10 a lot of the times because when we say, you know, open your mouth and say ah, what do we say? Stick out your tongue. So number 12 is 
stick out your tongue, and then can you move it from side to side? Can you move it from left to right? Like, ah, see, you got two of them down right there. So that's a quick review of the 12 cranial nerves. I did draw this little guy here in the corner for people who are more uh, visual learners who like to look at pictures. So the way you can remember these 12 in order is the mnemonic, O, 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 to touch and feel a giant volcano so hot. And yes, there are naughty ones that you can find on the internet, but I'm not going to tell those to you. So remembering them and remembering them in order and remembering what they do and how to do the assessments. Now we're going to talk about sensory versus motor cranial nerves. So now that we've reviewed all 12 cranial nerves, let's further break them up into the categories of sensory, motor, or both. So how do I know if something is a sensory or a motor? When you hear the word motor, I want you to think muscles. So muscle, movement, motor, all those M words. So what motor function is, is it checks for balance, posture, and equilibrium. Sensory, when you hear the word sensory, I want you to think about the senses, the five senses that I know you already know. So they conduct sensation of pain, temperature, position, vibration, and touch. And it's really important that if we have patients with impaired sensation, um, that we are aware of it because they are at highest risk for skin breakdown and pressure ulcer development. So let's get into the chart and talk about which ones are sensory, which ones are motor, and which ones are both. And once we do it, I hope it'll start to make sense, like, oh yeah, that makes sense why that one's sensory and that one is motor, etc. So olfactory, let's start with our first one, our sense of smell. That's one of our five senses, so it's a sensory one. Easy, right? Two, our sense of vision, our ability to see. Sensory. Three, ocular motor. This one's super easy because it has the word motor right in it, right? But it's our eye movement. Right? So motor movement. Four, trochlear. So looking at our nose, we have to use our eye muscles to do that. So motor muscles, number four, is motor. Now let's look at number five. Trigeminal is both a motor and a sensory. Why is it both? Because it involves movement of your jaw, which is muscles but then also sensation of your face. So remember we said we're gonna take like a little cotton ball and gently rub it on their cheek to see if they can sense it. So it's both. Six is our abducens. So motor, again, the muscles in the eye looking laterally side to side. Number seven is another one that's both. This is like our smiling and puffing out our cheeks, right? Number eight is auditory, one of our five senses. Can they hear you? Yes, okay, good. Number eight's intact and it's sensory. Number nine, glossopharyngeal, is both because remember, it's their ability to taste, which is a sense, and their ability to swallow, which involves muscle. Number 10 is vagus, it's also both. So the sensation of the pharynx and the vibration, the ah sound that we're making when we're doing that. So it's motor and sensory. Number 11 is motor, because this involves our muscles, right? Moving our shoulders. And then finally, number 12, hypoglossal is a motor, because that takes movement. That takes muscle movement. So when you hear motor, think movement, think muscles. When you hear sensory, think of our five senses. And the way you can remember this, just like we had our little mnemonic to remember um, the order, we can remember which ones are which by saying, some say marry money, but my brother says big brains matter more. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Cranial nerves can be really challenging, especially to first year students. Actually, they're challenging for everybody, <laughs> but they're really important. You need to get them down. You need to know them. It's going to help you do better patient care, and it's going to help you on future tests and the NCLEX. So if you have any questions or comments, anything you want me to know, just write it down below. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.